In this video, I'm going to be talking about pursuing healing through the Word of God and through your relationship with the Lord. So a lot of times we may approach healing for our physical bodies in such a way that we only think of the physical instead of diving deeper into the spiritual. And what I'm going to be talking about is how the Word of God is healing. We know that Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, that, that God's Word is a double-edged sword cutting through to the heart of the matter, into the innermost being. And certainly there are physical ailments that are just purely physical. Like if you broke your arm, you're going to need a cast. But there are certain things that may be, in fact, spiritual rather than just purely physical, meaning that they might actually have spiritual roots. And just a little quick word of testimony, I have had personal experiences where the Lord has healed me of something and told me, just told me flat out by the power of the Holy Spirit that it was spiritual. And that was an eye-opener for me. And so I want you to just dive in deeper. You know, I'm not necessarily asking you to take my word for it, or nor am I trying to answer whether your physical ailments are physical, purely physical, or spiritual. What I am suggesting is that you ask God and dive in deeper into your relationship with him and approach the word of God in order to meet with your father and hear his voice and ask for wisdom for yourself, for your own personal intimate walk. And he may, you know, lead you to go to the doctor, certainly. And I'm certainly not suggesting that if you have a broken arm that you just pray over it and don't go to the doctor. So take all of this with wisdom and common sense, okay? So I already discussed Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. So first off, I would suggest going and reading that verse in your Bible, diving in a little deeper and asking the Lord, what is the heart of the matter? What is the heart of the issue? And you may be watching this video and you're like, I don't have any physical issues. I actually want healing for a broken heart. And the thing is, we might actually have this physical manifestations in our body when we are actually dealing with a broken heart as well. And so this covers all those bases. So first thing we have to know is God is the ultimate healer, period, hands down. He's the ultimate creator. He created our bodies. He knows how they work. There is not one single thing that is hidden to God. Even the darkness is light to him, meaning he can see in through through the dark. It's us that have a very limited view in the dark. And so a lot of times we just need more light. We need the word of God. We need to read the word of God to actually hear his voice, to actually hear him on what we're praying through. A lot of times we just dive into prayer and we expect to hear him and we're just sitting there and we have not opened his word. Nothing says, I don't care what God has to say like a closed Bible. And I know that's a tough word. And I know that we've all been guilty, myself as well, you know, that we have been praying and we, we have been praying and we think that we're diving in deeper. Maybe we're even fasting, but then we're forgetting to pray. And so I want to look at this from a practical sense that yes, when we need healing, we should be praying, but we should also be reading the word of God and standing on his word. And if we are fasting, but not praying, it is not a fast unto the Lord. We need both. And so I'm not saying that God could not miraculously heal us through one prayer, just a, the prayer of faith or through the faith of the centurion. Certainly, I'm not suggesting that God can't heal us that way because of course he can. But sometimes the, it, the physical ailments and the thorn in our side, the thorn in our flesh is there to humble us so that we will dive deeper and pursue him. 
So why would I say that we need to go to the scriptures? Well, first off, it's the lamp unto our feet. When we need answers and we feel like, I, I just can't see what's going on here. I'm trying to see in the dark. A lot of times what we need is actually more light, the light of God's word. Because it is alive and active, you know, sometimes I've been asking the Lord something and then once I go to the scripture and maybe I am just reading a psalm and let's just say, for example, I'm asking him, what what should I do to gain income because I need income? And that's I know that that exact answer is not going to be in the psalm that I'm reading, but maybe I'm reading a psalm for confidence or a psalm that is about crying out to the Lord or crying out in my troubles. And I might find that I'm reading a couple of psalms and then nothing to do, I, well, I shouldn't say nothing to do with the scripture, but rather than it actually being in the psalm, the answer within the psalm, I just hear the Lord tell me exactly what his vision is for me to do. You know, either audibly or just the impression, the gentle impression comes to the forefront of my mind as I'm reading his word. Because when we open his word, we are meeting with our Father. We are expressing, I want to hear the Holy Spirit. And you may be thinking, well, I have a really hard time with discipline. I have a hard time actually reading my Bible. I mean to, I want to. The truth is we do the things that we actually want to do. We prioritize the things that we actually want to pursue. I mean, nobody ever says, well, I have a real problem um, missing my TV shows. Like, <laughs> or maybe, maybe you do, but... For the most part, people make time for the things that they really want to do. And so ask God to fix your want to, because sometimes we're saying that we want to read the word, we want to understand the word, and yet we're actually spending zero time on it. And so, or just not much time on it. And so I would suggest that you ask the Holy Spirit to fix your want to, align your heart, change your heart, and your attitude towards prioritizing God's word, ask the Holy Spirit for the self-control, ask the Holy Spirit to take distractions out of your appetite, ask the Holy Spirit to give you an increased thirst and understanding for God's word. When you approach God's word as though I'm meeting with my all-knowing Father, I am meeting with the one who created me, I am meeting with the one who knows everything, everything about me, everything about how my body works, how my heart works. And when we approach God's word from this standpoint and ask him, Lord, I want you to change my heart. Because sometimes we spend a lot of time praying for God to change our circumstances. A long time ago, I remember the Lord telling me, people are praying for me to change their circumstances and I want to change their hearts. I want to circumcise their hearts. People are praying for me to circumcise the circumstances and I want to circumcise their hearts. It would be a lot easier to grow in the process that God has us in if we actually ask him, what am I supposed to be growing in right now? What is it, God, that you are healing and shaping in my heart, in the attitudes of my heart? What do I need to let go? What, if I, what am I hanging on to that's actually a distraction that is harming me and our communion with one another? Prune me. God, I give you permission to prune me of the things that aren't producing any fruit. And you may find that you find healing on the journey, even for physical ailments. And so you may have already been praying a lot for your healing. But what I ask you is, have you actually asked God to change and shape and mold your heart? Have you asked him to prune away the dead things that might be physically manifesting in your body? And a scripture that I would encourage you to stand on 
is Romans chapter 8, verse 11, which I'm paraphrasing, but it basically says the same Holy Spirit that lives within me that raised Christ Jesus from the dead can certainly give life to our mortal bodies. I mean, that power, when we believe in Jesus Christ, is living within us. It's not some dimmed down, discount Holy Spirit that lives within us. It is the powerful resurrection life living within us. And yet sometimes we ignore him, right? We ignore the Holy Spirit. We talk a lot about God the Father and we talk a lot about Jesus Christ and that's great. But we also need to recognize that the power of the Holy Spirit lives within us as believers. Ask for him to stir you up in the spirit. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit's role in your life as your comforter. Acknowledge God as your healer and creator. Acknowledge that Jesus Christ, that it is by his wounds, by his stripes, that we are healed. And so Jesus has paid for your healing. He has paid for my healing. And yes, sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes there's this whole process. Sometimes we have a thorn in the flesh and there's something that God is doing in our lives to humble us. And sometimes while we're suffering, but standing firm in the faith, somebody else is watching and they are, are watching and seeing like, wow, this person really has faith even through suffering and they're receiving their faith. They're watching our witness in action. And so we don't always get the healing that we want right away. I do want to say that so that you don't get frustrated. But we don't become complacent about our own healing. If there's things in our lives that need healing, whether they're physical ailments, heart wounds, we need to go after God, seek his face continually, and be like, you know, the parable of the persevering widow with the unrighteous judge where if we have a righteous father where we can go to him and be like knocking on the door over and over and over again ask seek knock ask seek knock over and over and over again pursuing healing pursuing our sanctification pursuing holiness and i would say if you have physical ailments and all these things that i've said just were completely off your radar, they need to be on your radar. And I promise I am sharing this with you because I am passionate about seeing other people walk in freedom and victory, not just from physical ailments, but also just spiritual stuff. You know, if you have not fasted in prayer for your own healing, why not? Do you not believe that you're worth it? Do you not believe that other people are worth it? Isaiah chapter 58 talks about the kind of fast that God desires. And it is to break the bonds of oppression. That we are not to be oppressed. We are not to oppress others. We are not to have idols in our life. And so the very physical ailments that are perplexing you, is there any kind of oppression in your life? Is there any kind of idolatry? Is there any place where you have put other gods, other gods before the almighty God? And if, if you're kind of like, oh yeah, I've kind of been prioritizing a lot of other things, myself included, above God, well then I would start with a fast in prayer to tear down idols. And the reason I say this is because a long time ago I was doing a fast and I honestly thought I was trying to break bonds of oppression off of finances. I, you know, I really thought I was fasting for God's provision. And I got about 14 days into the fast maybe when he said, you think it's about provision and it's not. This fast is about idolatry. He basically was calling me out because I considered myself the provider. I didn't realize I did. You know, I knew from a head knowledge standpoint that he's my provider 
um, and that I'm his child, but it was kind of like deep in my spirit. I wasn't getting it. I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to fast. And then you're going to tell me how I'm going to make money and provide for myself. And he was like, no, no, no. Like that's, you're not the provider. I'm your provider. And so even within that, I was like, oh, well, you're going to provide through my husband. And then he told me in a dream that that was an idol, that that was a counterfeit spirit, that I was like, I was just, you know, I got off, you know, the altar of my own heart. And then I just was like, I'll just put somebody else there, you know? And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, you're not getting it. I'm your provider. Trust me. And so I share all that with you to just say, sometimes the fast, you know, sometimes we're fasting for what we want instead of doing the fast that God would have us to do and praying the things that God wants us to pray into. We need to ask him when we do a fast, what is the fast about? Ask him for the, you know, is this a Holy Spirit led fast? And also, you know, I need the Holy Spirit to sustain me with it. But I think I'm fasting for this, but Lord, what is the fast about? We have to seek revelation through a fast. And not every fast is like a 21-day Daniel fast, you know, or a 10-day Daniel fast. A fast can literally just be, I'm fasting for this next hour. But in order for it to be a fast unto the Lord, that time needs to be spent in prayer. If you're not spending that time in prayer, then it may just be, you're just starving yourself. Just starving yourself, just trying to prove to yourself that you can go an hour without Twinkies, you know? I'm not just, I mean, I'm not saying you're going to fast from Twinkies, but you know what I'm saying. It's like, no, it needs to be in prayer and it needs to be spirit-led and it needs to be intentional that I am spending this time intentionally with God. I hope that that helps somebody and... um I just kind of want to leave you with a final thought. If we want to break down, if we want to bring down strongholds, then we must pray loaded prayers that swing the sword of the spirit, the word of God. We must stand on the word, believing God's word and his promises. He is faithful to his word. It helps to actually speak it out loud, not just for the cutting through the atmosphere and piercing whatever plans the enemy has, but also for the building up of our own faith. Sometimes we need to preach to ourselves, speak to our own heart, minister to our own heart, and, and actually speak, speak it out because the anointing is on our tongue. The power of life and death is on our tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. So are you speaking against your own healing? Are you constantly complaining about all your physical ailments and never standing on the word? So instead of fear, doubt, and doom, I encourage you to pick up faith, hope, and love. Ask the Holy Spirit for help with these things. Ask God for insight into what he says about your healing journey. I say all these things in love, and I just pray that may God bless you and keep you, shine his face towards you, be gracious towards you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.